Hi, I'm Nicola Robson and welcome to my presentation on my first semester as a graphic design student. Uh, here is an overview of my first two modules. My first location was Exeter Cathedral. I knew from the start this was going to be one that I would be most passionate about. I hadn't been inside for years, but I knew it had some amazing architecture and some very high ceilings. Uh, so going through the cathedral, I made sure to look up and down and from all different angles, which is something I'd learnt from one of our first workshops. So it turned out to be extremely helpful in all future tasks, which was really good. I tried to make sure I got lots of close-ups and I started picking apart statues whilst I was there. I was really, really struck by the colours that I'd found, but then I realised that our font was to be in black and white, so I couldn't necessarily act upon that, but it was still great to see and it was still very inspiring. The outside of the cathedral is amazing. It's so full of detail and it's hard to believe that it's all handmade. It was discovered through some renovation work that all the statues used to be coloured too, which I would have loved to have seen. It's obviously all one colour now, but it's still a really impressive sight. This leads me on to my font that's been inspired by the cathedral. It took me six tries to get to this end result, which is a lot more than I was hoping for, but I'm happy I got there in the end. I started off very detailed and intricate, which was the illustrator and me coming out, but actually I learned that for a font it couldn't be that detailed, as when it gets scaled down, the details got lost or became blobs. I do like that it kept some details however, because I did want to emphasise all the small details that the cathedral has. My font has been named Exedral, which is a mixture of Exeter and Cathedral. It was originally named Sculpted due to the sculpting elements, but my tutor gave me a few other suggestions to help with the creativity aspect of the name. So it's now called Exedral. Here is my quick brown fox sentence. I think it reads really nicely and it's really pleasant on the eyes to look at. Overall, I'm really happy with the result. I won't show the location photos again as it's the same location as before, the cathedral. I knew that I'd love this location so much that I'd be inspired to create multiple fonts from it. So for this one, I started this font by looking at the material that the cathedral was made from. It turns out it was mainly a type of marble, and so I tried out a few marble effects. The result you see here has developed into more of a weathered rock look, and it has lots of little markings. This was due to my stone experiment, where I searched for stones on a beach that had markings that resembled letters. So although it isn't a marble result, it's still stone and I still got to this point through being influenced by the cathedral's materials. I really, really like this one. It's my second favourite definitely. I love that it's so different from the first font, despite them both being from the cathedral. The name for my second font is Weathered. I went with this name because it has a very worn down and weathered look, so I thought it was appropriate. It also goes alongside the age of the cathedral, because it was built a very long time ago and the outside rock will be weathered because of this. I think it also gives a good example of a way you can use this font creatively, almost as a way of illustrating the word. The brown fox sentence looks very creative using this font. I wouldn't use it for a body of text, it's definitely only for a header or a title. Uh, but considering that it's made up of lots of markings, I still think it's fairly readable.
Finally, for my third font, I used a different location, which was the Mill on the X. It is now a pub, but it did used to be a fully working mill. You can see there's an older photograph there where you can compare it to what it used to look like back then to what it looks like now. It was a little bit of a disappointing visit. There wasn't actually too much there. It is just more of a pub and some beautiful grounds now more than anything else. Uh, but after a bit of exploring, I did come across this old piece of machinery and it was actually pretty inspiring. Uh, so upon speaking to my tutor about this, uh, he did encourage me to pick apart the machine that was there and to see what I could do with it. And luckily I'd taken photos from all different angles, so that's what I did. Due to the fact this was the only thing I was able to base my font off of, I was really conscious to make sure that my new developed font was quite a bit different from the original font that we did at the beginning. So I made an effort to look at the pieces even closer and sort of turn them all different ways and flip them about. Uh, and like my first cathedral font, this one also took me a couple of goes before I got to the final result, but I am really happy with how it's turned out. I decided to call this font X Mill, meaning Exeter and Mill, but it also has the double meaning of X Mill, as in this location used to be a mill. My brown fox sentence looks mechanical, it looks solid, it basically looks like pieces of machinery, which I'm really happy with. Uh, it's not as nice to read as my other fonts, but because I'd already created two fonts previously, I tried to focus on the creativity side more than the legibility. To conclude, I felt I worked really well on creativity. I tried to always think outside of the box, sometimes perhaps a bit too much, like when it came to the detail, but I'm happy that I've learnt this now. I aim to achieve different results of each font, I didn't just want slight variations of each other, so I do feel that creativity and diversity was achieved. Also included in this is the fact that I did both uppercase and lowercase fonts, just to add to the diversity and to make a personal challenge to myself. If I had more time, I would want to work more on the final font for the mill. I do like it, but I just feel like it could still be better. If it was my only font, I would definitely be putting in more hours for it because I want my work to be something that I'm proud of. I am very proud of the first two, however, so that's fine. And I would also have liked to have done a coloured version for each. I think if colour was in the criteria, I would have done a stained glass window font for the cathedral as well. The most useful feedback I received was on the details. From my tutor, it was all about thickening up the tiny lines I'd used and making things a lot more refined, which at first I was probably quite sad about because I love detail, but it did always improve it, so I can't complain. My peers suggested my black and white colouring of one of my original fonts reminded them of Cat in the Hat, which was fine, but it just made me realise that I should probably change that as it wasn't really the look I was going for. Uh, so simplifying my work overall is the best advice I received. I've learned a lot from these modules. I actually now feel like I understand what it means to be a graphic designer. I've been a bit in and out of being an illustrator and a designer, which means I've tried to put my own personal style in my work too much and it's never really worked. Because what I've learned is graphic design isn't necessarily about your own personal style. It's more about designing based on the criteria given or the brand or even the client. It's taken me a while to wrap my head around that, but now I feel like I'm actually starting to understand it and it's making me feel a bit more confident going forwards. I've also learned more tools on Illustrator and progressive my skills in using them as well, especially on the pen tool. It's been an enemy of mine for a while now, but since using it for every task of this module, I've become really confident in using it. One of my strongest points is my time management. I think it's a hugely important skill to have and something that future jobs will always look for from you. It's also quite helpful in day-to-day -day life. 
Uh, because of these skills, I've managed to create three different fonts, meaning I've had a bit more opportunity to evaluate each one and see where I've gone wrong and where I can improve in the future. And that is everything. So thank you for watching and thank you for listening.